before I start this video, I'd like to thank all the folks working on the Nobara project. Without them, this video would not even be possible. Um, I would also like to mention that this video in particular is essentially a re-upload of the last video I had on the same subject, except this version of the video is more up to date since it includes compatibility for NVIDIA GPU and Intel CPU combination or NVIDIA GPU and AMD CPU laptops or even the ROG NUC, similar devices that have an NVIDIA GPU. I would also like to mention that Optimus Technology only recently started working with Gamescope, like last couple days recently. Like the last video that I released did not work with Optimus laptops, but now it does, hence this video. That being said, if you want to use this tutorial for desktops, you still can. There's just one difference, so pay close attention. Real quick, the way that those devices work is that they use hybrid technology or Optimus technology, which is basically when the NVIDIA or dedicated graphics card is used to render games and more demanding things, whereas the integrated graphics on the CPU are used to render like the display or the desktop environment if you're using Linux. Lower demanding things are typically what the integrated graphics are for, and then more intense things are what the dedicated graphics, or NVIDIA GPU in this case, is for. Now with all that nerdy stuff out of the way, let's get into the video. First, you're going to want to head over to BellinaEtcher.org and hit the download button. It'll take you down here. I'm going to assume you're probably on Windows. If you're on Linux, you probably know what you're doing. Go ahead and do your thing. But for this video, I'm just going to hit this link here. It's going to download. All right, it says it's done, but you're going to give it a second or two just to wait for the loading bar. All right, hit that, and then go ahead and set it up. It should come over and show this Lego here and it'll only be there for like a second and it'll go away and then this will come up. At this point, you're going to head over to the Nobara website. You're going to hit download. It's going to take you to this page here and then you're going to scroll down until you see Nobara Steam HTPC and you'll notice it's under the NVIDIA paragraph here. Just go ahead and hit download and then hit agree. All right, it's going to start downloading. I'll be back when it's done. All right, and we're back. The download just finished, so go ahead and open Belina Etcher if it isn't already open. Hit flash from file and then go to your downloads and you're going to look for Nobara 40 Steam Deck Edition. Go ahead and open. Then you're going to want to flash whatever device it is you're using to flash the Steam Deck operating system installer onto and plug it into your computer. Go ahead and hit select target after you've done that. For me, it's this one right here. I'm going to hit select one. Then you're just going to want to flash. I'm going to hit yes to this pop-up. Let it do its thing. It's going to take a minute, so be patient. And I'll be back once this is done. All right, the download is just about finished, so here in a minute it's going to get to this verifying bit. You can just go ahead and skip that. And at this point, it should be finished, so you can actually just remove your thumb drive. Then you're just going to want to go ahead and turn off your computer. Once it's done, you can take your device that you flashed your Steam Deck installer to and just go ahead and plug it back in. Then just go ahead and turn on your computer hold down whatever key it is to get into your boot menu. For me it's F12, I'm using an Acer laptop. And you're just going to want to head over to whatever device that is. For me it's Olympus Lite, hit enter. And then go up to Start Nobara 40. In my experience the Testus Media only works some of the time, so just do the first one. After a couple minutes it should take you to the installer. Let me see if I can focus in here so you can actually see what I'm doing. Alrighty. Eventually you should get to this point right here where it's asking you to set up the installer. Go ahead and hit next. Choose whatever region you're in for your time and date. Then hit next. Then whatever keyboard layout you like, hit next. And this is the point where you choose what drive you want SteamOS installed onto. So I'm going to go with this drive right here. 
I'm going to hit erase and it's an SSD so I do not want hibernate but I will take swap let's go ahead and hit next and at this point you're just going to put in your information here like your name you know what your username is going to be the computer's name your password all that and once you're done with that just go ahead and hit the next button and it's going to give you this summary right here as long as everything looks good you can go ahead and hit the install button now this process is going to take a while. It will depend on the speed of your hard drive. I'm using an SSD so it should go a little bit faster than if I were using something like an HDD. Optical media bad. So in any case, this is going to take a minute. I'll be back when it's done. Once it's done downloading, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the done button and then come over to here and just shut down the PC. You can hit the restart button if you want to, but go ahead and turn your PC back on. Hold down whatever button it is you use to get into your boot menu, if you're doing it the way I am. And go ahead and select whatever drive it is you have that has SteamOS on it. Let's go ahead and hit the first option. It's important to note that this might take a little while, so just be patient. Eventually, you should be greeted with a screen like this. I don't want this showing up every time I go to desktop mode, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off and hit X. And this is where it's going to ask you to sign into Steam. Go ahead and do that. If you're on a laptop, go ahead and go to Steam, go to Settings, and then go to Interface, and go to Enable GPU Accelerated Rendering and Web Views. Go ahead and turn that on. This will make it so your Steam UI is smoother or game mode is smoother. You can go ahead and hit restart. It might ask you to sign in again, just go ahead and do that. If you're on desktop, I would not recommend doing this because it might make your game mode kind of like glitchy and it might introduce uh, a few problems. But in my experience, it's fine if you do it on laptops that have an NVIDIA GPU. I would assume it's the same for like the ROG NUC. So I didn't have to sign in again, but as you can see, if we go to settings and I go to interface, it's on, so we're good. I'm just gonna close Steam for now, close this. And then the next thing we're gonna do is update the system. This is vital for getting GameScope to work on laptops with an NVIDIA GPU. So I'm gonna hit yes. This process is actually going to take a while because it has to install drivers and then um, like modules and stuff. So you're going to want to put in your password. This little window right here is going to show up. You're just going to want to let it do its thing. If you get this pop up, just go ahead and hit yes. And then it's going to get to this point, just hit install updates. When it's finished, and it might take a while, you should get to this screen right here. I'm going to hit no, because I'm going to do it myself. But at this point, you should be pretty much finished. I'm just going to shut down. You are going to want to restart before game scope or game mode starts working, so just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to hold the button down while it starts up. And I'm going to click on Fedora, which is really SteamOS. And the first option is fine. If you leave it, it'll just do it automatically. But you can hit enter and have the operating system start immediately. It's important to note that when it starts up like this, since it's using NVIDIA, it can take a while. And switching from game mode to desktop can also take a while. So. What I'm going to do right now is just double check and make sure that the NVIDIA drivers are currently working. They should be. I'm just going to really quick go to a TTY line instead of going to console. I mean, you can do either one, but I'm going to do it this way. And to check to see if your NVIDIA driver or NVIDIA GPU is functioning, just go ahead and type in NVIDIA dash or hyphen and then SMI. And if you see this box right here, you should be good. Now we're in desktop mode right now, so it's using integrated graphics to run that. 
you'll see there's no running processes. Now I'm going to go back by hitting Control alt f1 to get the GUI. Now that it's open, I'm just going to hit return to gaming mode and it'll shut down Steam. If it doesn't let you into game scope, one thing you can do is just restart the PC again. I have found that to work. So I'm just going to shut down. And then just power back on. Boot into Fedora. The first option. And as you can see, it boots into game mode. I did not leave it in game scope mode when I shut down the computer, but sometimes it'll do this. And I've even had it go into game scope like right after I hit shut down, and then it just stayed in game scope. So it's a little finicky at first, but once you get it working, it should be fine. Then my internet, I'm connected through ethernet, but you should have drivers for Wi-Fi. And then I'm just gonna select my profile and it should log in. And it's just going to act exactly like a Steam Deck at this point. So I'm going to pull up my quick settings real quick. I'll get back to you after I configure my controller. And my controller is now fully functional. So I'll just show you real quick. Alright, we're plugged in. And it's a wired controller. So if you want to, you can use Bluetooth. Um, let me just show you that working real quick. You can also pull it up through the quick settings like this and then add a device through here and there you see it's going to search for devices and I imagine a lot of you are probably going to use a Bluetooth controller I'm a bit of an oddball I like my cords and cables just for a seemingly quicker connection you can argue all day about how it doesn't really make too much of a difference but I like my cables and cords I'd like to mention I don't currently have a way of adjusting TDP, so you're just going to have to go with whatever the system gives you. Or if you have the option in your BIOS, you can actually adjust it there too for some laptops. One of the ways you can reduce battery usage is if you go and like lower the frame rate or something like that, you know, lower the brightness, you know, just simple things like that. Airplane mode if you're playing offline games. I'm sure there's ways to adjust battery usage or power usage in console or terminal. Speaking of which, I'm just going to show you real quick that even though it says we're using Intel graphics for the GameScope compositor, we should be using the NVIDIA card. All signs point to the NVIDIA card being used, even some of the symptoms it has, some of the issues I've had on my desktop rolled over to my laptop, but real quick. Just to show you that we are in fact using the NVIDIA GPU, I'm going to go into the TTY lines one more time, do the same thing basically. I'm just going to hit the up arrow because it's the last command we entered. And you'll see here that it says we're running GameScope with the NVIDIA card. You'll notice that there's this processes box here and GameScope is one of them. So we are in fact using the NVIDIA GPU to render GameScope, even though the UI says otherwise. Now, another way you can test this is if you get a game. I have uh, a more demanding game on here that definitely would not run on the integrated graphics. I'm just going to plug it into my PC. And now, if I go to my library, my non-Steam games, and launch this, there should be somewhere in here that it says it's using GameScope. I can't exactly remember where. But now that Battlefront is open, I'm going to go into the TTY lines and just run the same command. And you'll notice this time that down here it says Battlefront 2. That's just the name of the game, obviously. And it is also running GameScope. So it's doing both of those things. And I'm assuming the integrated GPU is doing basically everything else, which isn't a whole lot. But... These two are the most important things, game scope and then whatever game you have. So I'm just going to go back to Battlefront and let it load. And
And that's pretty much it for the tutorial. If you guys like this video, then go ahead and leave a like. Make sure to subscribe. I probably will not be uploading for a while because I've just been really busy with college. Um, hopefully I can be a greater technician than I am now. Maybe not the greatest technician that ever lived. But uh, I do know that optical media bad, so that will help me in my journey. I'm going to stop it right here. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Please hit me up if you have any problems. Take it easy.